Hi there, John Wilkinson here and History Made Easier. Why did the Cold War happen? It's the first big question you IGCSE students will face in your three topics on the Cold War. Why did it happen? I would begin my explanation by saying that the Soviet Union had an opportunity and they were going to take it. They had 12 million troops in Eastern Europe and they were not going home anytime soon. The British had wanted to get involved in Eastern Europe. They thought they could push out of Northern Italy up through Southern Europe and get involved on the Eastern Front. But the Americans, for their good reasons, vetoed it. America was involved in a war in Europe for the second time now. And they, quite understandably, wanted to minimise the loss of American lives. So they wanted to focus on the Western Front and leave the Eastern Front to the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union had an opportunity. They also had good reasons. By occupying Eastern Europe, they would create a buffer zone, a buffer between themselves and the West. And if the West wanted to take on the Soviet Union and try and crush communism at any point in the future, well, they could do their fighting in Eastern Europe, not on Russian soil. They also would gain an economic sphere, which they thought would be to, their, to the advantage of their home economy. And they had at last the chance to export the revolution to spread the revolution further afield. Lenin had wanted to do it and thought it would happen back in 1917, but it didn't happen. Well, now they had their chance. So the Soviet Union had the opportunity and they had good reasons. The Americans didn't want a war, but they couldn't simply let the Soviet Union get away with this, that they had to hold the line. And so we have the Truman Doctrine and we have martial aid. And we also have the the head-to-head -head in Berlin in the winter of 1948-49, when the West refused to budge from West Berlin. And much as the Soviet Union tried to force them out, they stayed there. You will study that. So, America draws the line and we have a Cold War. But there are other reasons. There are, not going way back into the past, but there are historical reasons. From the Soviet point of view, we go back to the Russian Civil War and the West's support of the whites who were fighting the communists. And the Western support, despite what some textbooks say, was quite considerable. So we have that. After World War I, we have Russia ostracized. It wasn't even invited to the Paris Peace Conference. It wasn't invited, at first at least, to join the League of Nations. When Stalin attempted to forge a, an anti-fascist alliance during the Spanish Civil War, he was snubbed by the British and the French. Then there was appeasement, and again, the Soviet Union wasn't even invited to the Munich Conference, even though the Soviet Union 
had a treaty with Czechoslovakia. From the West's perspective, well, there's the Nazi-Soviet pact and the, 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 the secret clause in that pact that led to the division of Poland between the Germans and the Soviet Union. There was also the mass murder of Polish prisoners of war, Polish officers, when the Russians invaded Poland. These bodies were found in, in the forests outside Katyn. And there was also the deliberate delay on the part of the Soviet Union in coming to support the Warsaw Uprising. Soviet forces were right outside Warsaw. But the Soviet Union said they needed to rest. And so when the P Warsaw Uprising took place, the Germans massacred um, Polish leaders. Now the West saw both the murder of Polish officers and the um, reluctance, shall we say, to, to support uh, the Warsaw Uprising as a deliberate policy on the part of the Soviet Union to ensure that any leadership in Poland after World War II would lack depth. The leaders were being killed. And so there were uh, historical reasons, even though the history was quite recent, there were historical reasons for falling out. There were immediate reasons too. First of all, what to do with Germany. Russia wanted Germany stripped. They wanted reparations both in money and in kind, in machinery and goods and anything it could get its hands on. Whereas the West looked at what had happened with the Treaty of Versailles and Hitler's rise to power in this war of revenge and they didn't want to repeat the same mistake. So there was what to do with Germany. There was also what to do with Poland. Now, of course, Britain and France had gone to war over Poland. And the what to do with Poland argument was on two fronts, really. What government should Poland have? There were the, the, the communists in Lublin, but there, were the, there was the Polish government in exile in London. How should a post-war government be formed out of those two groups? And there was an immediate issue over the border between the Soviet Union and Poland. The Soviet Union wanted it pushed westwards. So what to do with Germany and what to do with Poland? There was also the atom bomb that America had and America refused to share the secrets of that bomb with the Soviet Union. And there was this issue over the sphere of influence that was agreed at Yalta. You will read about this. The sphere of influence was an acceptance that Russia had a stake in Eastern Europe and so had the right to have an influence in Eastern Europe. But what exactly was meant by that influence wasn't agreed, wasn't discussed. Stalin, of course, saw it very differently to the way the West did. So historical reasons, even if the history only goes back to 1917 and ends actually during the war, um, and immediate pressing reasons for falling out. The other thing is that there was the matter of personalities. The two personalities that really clashed at Yalta were Churchill 
and Stalin. The two personalities that clashed at Potsdam were Truman, who had taken over from Roosevelt and Stalin. So there you have a number of reasons for why there was a Cold War. I haven't given you masses of detail, that wasn't the purpose of this talk. But I have given you a shape, a shape that will help you make sense of your reading and help you construct good notes. So, as always, I now thank you for listening. And as always, I remind you to check out my website, History Made Easier. It's there to help you. Cheers. <laughs>